Florida and Vegas are two red hot housing markets in which so many people are choosing to relocate to as they offer many attractive qualities. Lots of sunshine, wonderful quality of life, and both are no state income tax states, which is a huge appeal for many coming from other high income tax states. So which one is right for you? Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Stark and welcome back. If you're just tuning in for the first time today, I'm a realtor in both great states of Nevada and Florida. Oftentimes, Vegas and Florida are on the top five list of locations of where people want to move to if they're thinking of moving from a different state. I'm going to break it down for you in part one of my new video series, Vegas versus Florida, and specifically the northeast coast of Florida, the greater Jacksonville area. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, make sure you click that subscribe button to stay up to date on this series and other content that I bring to you all about real estate on this channel. Honestly, I found that the two locales really complement each other. And if you're fortunate enough to have a place in both, that is the best lifestyle. I would say Florida in the winter and Vegas in the summer and more on that topic later, but that's really the ideal lifestyle. I will make sure to timestamp all the topics I'm talking about in today's video in the description box below. So let's just get right into it. First, let's talk about the general area as a whole. Jacksonville is huge. It is the largest city by landmass in the United States. It's 875 square miles and is comprised of many different counties. You have Nassau County to the north, just below the Georgia border. You have Duval County, which is where Jacksonville Beach is located. You have St. Johns County, which is where Ponte Vedra Beach and St. Augustine is located with one of the top rated school districts in the United States. And you also have Clay County, which is where Fleming Island is located. So a lot of different counties in a very large city. If you're pretty centrally located within the greater Jacksonville area one of the things that locals always talk about here is how far away is this and usually the answer is 20 minutes it's a 20 minute drive to everything if you're located pretty centrally within the city if you are very far south down in st augustine then to get to the jacksonville international airport which sits further north will take you about an hour and 15 minutes so that just kind of gives you an idea of how large the city is versus Las Vegas, which is also a large city, but not nearly quite as large as it takes me about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on traffic, to get from one side of town to another. Population. The population in Las Vegas for the greater Las Vegas area, so that will include Las Vegas, the city of Henderson, Boulder City, North Las Vegas, is about 2.8 million versus the greater Jacksonville area, which is at about 1.3 million. The population in Las Vegas has absolutely exploded. And in fact, from 1990 to the year 2000, it doubled in size and we continue to grow. Jacksonville is much less dense, especially as the city is so large. But as Zillow just named Jacksonville the number two hottest housing market for 2022, it is absolutely growing and the population is steadily increasing and lots of exciting growth and development happening here in the northeast coast of florida desert versus coastal mountains versus water let's start with vegas vegas has beautiful mountains we have red rock canyon which is a beautiful national park with incredible hiking and just picturesque, serene Red Rock Mountains. We have the Black Mountains in Henderson. We have Sunrise Mountains to the east. We have Lone Mountain out in the northwest. And we also have the most incredible desert sunsets that are like sky candy every single night. There's always a different portrait in the sky and those desert sunsets are absolutely glorious. As Vegas has developed, it really kind of started centrally located around the strip and it's kind of spread out into those mountains. So what you'll find is that our home communities are now nestled at the base of the mountains and offer really some great elevation. In some of these communities, you are elevated way above the Las Vegas Valley. And as you walk around the communities, you can see the skyline of the strip and you can see the mountains in the backdrop. And there's some pretty good elevation in these home communities. 
The other thing to keep in mind is that Vegas is a valley. So on windy days, what will happen is we'll get a windstorm and the dust and pollution will kind of settle and hover around the city in which you can't even see the strip or you can't even see the mountains and sometimes the air quality is a little bit unhealthy. The wind will continue to blow and it'll blow it right out in a day or two, but we do get some haze and some dust and pollution that will settle as a layer over the valley. When we talk about Jacksonville, we're talking about the River City. So there are so many waterways in this area. You have the St. Johns River, you have the Intracoastal, and then you have the Atlantic Ocean to the east. And then you have all the Everglades and the beautiful preserved land. So you never really find that it gets polluted here. The air quality is always pretty clean and pretty fresh with all the trees and the water. That being said, it's pretty flat. So there's really no elevation going on in Jacksonville. So if you are looking for a home with a view, you're pretty much gonna have to be right on the ocean or right on the river as it's not like Vegas, which has elevation where you can be far away from those things and elevated above to get a home with a view. Cruising around on a bike in either Jack's Beach or St. Augustine is really fun. It's super flat, so you'll really never get tired. But if mountain biking is your thing, then you may prefer Vegas because we do have a lot of great mountain biking trails as well as hiking trails where you really can climb some nice elevation. Jacksonville has water everywhere. In fact, every neighborhood is going to have a water retention pond that helps prevent flooding in the streets and the neighborhoods and also keeps sediment out of the rivers and tributaries. One other thing to note is that if you are coming from California because you want to continue with that coastal lifestyle, but perhaps in a no state income tax state, is in the northeast part of Florida. The sun rises over the ocean as opposed to the sun setting, but I will tell you that having the sunrise over the ocean is a completely magical experience and you will find so many beach goers who wake up early just to catch the sunrise. Which leads me to my next topic of water. There is no shortage of water in Florida whatsoever. In fact, if anything, there's too much. And that could be cause for concern because as we all know, Florida does get hurricanes and they do have rainstorms here and flooding that can occur. Pretty much all of Florida is in a flood zone. So if you are buying a home, you're gonna wanna check with either the FEMA maps or your realtor to see what type of flood zone the property of interest is located in. If you are located in a flood zone, your lender is certainly going to require flood insurance, which is on top of your homeowner's insurance. And if you're paying cash for the property, it's probably a wise idea to have that extra flood insurance anyway, because you never know what will happen with mother nature. In Vegas, we have a water shortage. So it's dramatically different because we're in a desert. We get our water from Lake Mead and the Colorado River and the Lake Mead levels as of recently have been extremely low. So what the city of Las Vegas has done is implement restrictions for water conservation, especially as our population keeps growing. One of the things that the city has done is if you are purchasing a new home in Las Vegas, you cannot have grass in your front yard. You must desert scape. The other thing that they've done is for the residents who have been established there, the water district has offered residents a credit to remove the sod and replace with desert landscaping to keep with that water conservation. Uh, when I'm in my Vegas home, I definitely make sure that I do things to conserve water, such as turning off the faucet when I'm brushing my teeth and when I'm loading the dishwasher and washing dishes, I will turn it off as I load the dishwasher and things like that, just to make sure that we conserve water as we are in the desert. That being said, in the 20 plus years that I've been selling real estate there, never once has a home I sold been located in a flood zone, so flood insurance is not really a concern in the desert. Let's talk housing prices. So in Jacksonville, the median home price is 350,000. The median sold home price is $187 a square foot. There's about a 1.1 month supply of inventory. So very tight inventory levels in Jacksonville, especially as Zillow named it the number two housing market just behind Tampa for 2022. 
With 875 square miles, there is still a bright future for a lot of growth and opportunity, which makes the city very attractive because there's a lot of new housing developments and a lot of new shopping centers. It's really a great time to buy and hold over the next 10, 20 years. I predict that this market will continue to appreciate extremely nicely. In Vegas, things are a bit more expensive. The median home price is 435,000. And in fact, that is up another 10,000 from just last month where the median home price was 425,000. It keeps going up month after month after month. We actually have about a 0.6 of one month supply of inventory. And in the condo and townhome market, we have about a two week supply of inventory. So it's an extremely tight market. The median list price of current available homes is sitting at about 460,000. One thing about Las Vegas that many people don't realize is that we are pretty much out of land and it is in scarce supply. I know oftentimes people come to the desert and they see that there's all this land, but whatever is there is pretty much spoken for. And we really have a limited supply of land, which is one of the reasons that prices are appreciating quite rapidly and will continue to do so just based on supply of land and demand of people relocating to Las Vegas. Property taxes. Property taxes in Clark County, Nevada are probably one of the lowest in the nations, especially when you compare it to other no state income tax states. A lot of times realtors will say it's about 1% of the purchase price, but that's really not an accurate depiction of how property taxes in Las Vegas are calculated. They're actually calculated based on the assessed value, less any depreciation cost, and then they add back in replacement and land value. So it's a little bit of a complicated formula. And I'll post that link in the description box below so that you can see how they're calculated. But let's take, for example, a $500,000 home in Clark County. Your property taxes are going to run between 2,500 and 2,900 per year. In Florida, a half a million dollar home, let's say in St. John's County, for example, if your property is homesteaded, which means that Florida is your primary residence, your property taxes will run about 4,000 per year. If you have a second home in Florida, so you cannot claim a homestead exemption on your property taxes, that half a million dollar home will run you about 7,000 per year in property taxes, so about one and a half percent. So property taxes, hands down in Las Vegas, definitely wins over Florida. And lastly, let's talk about the weather as we have two very different climates, both of which are extremely hot in the summertime. But if you're gonna ask me, I'm gonna take the Vegas dry heat any day, any time over the hot and humid Florida summers. And that is why I say Florida in the winter and Vegas in the summer. When we're talking about 100 degrees in Vegas, it's not really like 100 degrees that you'll find in other places throughout the United States. So if you're coming from California and you're in the 90s, or if you're coming from Florida and you're in the 90s, or if you're in the Midwest and it hits the 90s, you are absolutely dying. If you're in Vegas and it's in the 90s or it's about 100 degrees, it actually feels really good because it is a really dry heat. There are days where it gets 115 and yes, it's brutally hot and very similar to Florida, you'll find people limit their activities in the morning or the evening when it cools down. In the summer in Jacksonville, pretty much guaranteed every day a thunderstorm will roll through in the afternoon. So it kind of cools things off for a little bit and gives you a little bit of relief, but it's still very humid. And as soon as you go outside, you're sweating and may need multiple showers or change of clothes throughout the day. It's also hurricane season in the summer, so that can be a little scary for people because Vegas really doesn't have any natural disasters or anything that you really have to worry about. In the winter times, both can get chilly. So Vegas in the winter time, it's a desert and it absolutely does get chilly when the sun goes down. But the nice thing about the winters is usually the sun is shining. So if you get out during the day, you absolutely can enjoy your outdoor activities. We also don't get a ton of rain in Vegas and on a few rare occasion, maybe once every 20 years or so, 
we will get snow, but that's actually really exciting. <laughs> that's actually really exciting for us in the desert. Jacksonville can also get quite chilly in the winter, but they have a pretty mild winter. If you live in Jacksonville, you better get used to driving in the rain, have umbrellas, definitely have a raincoat, definitely have some rain boots. This past winter actually was unseasonably cold for Jacksonville and there were quite a few days where it was overcast and the sun didn't come out and it didn't feel like Florida at all. It was overcast and rainy and damp and cold, but then the sun came out and everybody came out and it was like the sunshine state all over again. So that is one of the things that people actually do like about Jacksonville is that it does have a little bit more season feeling than some of the other southern parts of Florida. Fall and spring are both absolutely beautiful in both Vegas and the northeast coast of Florida. So you'll just have to decide whether you want to be near the beaches and live that coastal lifestyle or whether you absolutely can't deal with humidity and you prefer a more dry heat with a cocktail lounging by the pool. That covers it for part one of my video series, Vegas versus Florida. If there are any topics that you'd like me to talk about between the two different cities, let me know in the comments below. I hope you found this video informative. If you haven't yet already subscribed to my channel, make sure you click that subscribe button. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all on the next video. Bye for now.